Oh, what do you folks? It's here and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we are going to begin one of the four new bush trips with the latest world update, Central Eastern Europe, I think it's called, something like that. Um, we have, what do we have? Upper Northeast Adriatic countries, and then down here there's uh, Carpathian's Journey, the Czech route, and then there's one more somewhere. Where is it? It's here somewhere. There we go at the end. Danube journey. So which one do we want to do first? Let's do this one first because I just clicked on it. All right, here we go. Through Slovakia and Hungary. Um, Slovakia, Slok, Slok, Slovak. Oh my gosh. Slovakia, wow, and Hungary both possess unique mixes of cultures, traditions, and histories. Although distinct, the two Central European countries share traits beyond their common border. Both are landlocked. Both have been touched dramatically by migration, regional turmoil, and change through time. And both have risen from the ashes of war to be successful modern standouts on the global stage. For those of you who don't know what landlocked means, it means they're surrounded by land of other countries in every direction. There's no water like oceans and seas. Um, very few landlocked countries in the world. So it's kind of a big deal that they're two next to each other. Each nation traces its lineage to prehistoric times and each experienced significant development throughout Europe's historic periods, notably the Roman Empire, the Migration Period, the Middle Ages, the Modern Era. This includes influxes of people through the centuries that dramatically influenced each country's unique cultural composition. In the 20th century, both countries were members of the Austro-Hungarian Empire until its collapse during the First World War. Today, Slovakia became a component of Czechoslovakia after World War I. After a series of upheavals throughout World War II and then the Cold War, Slovakia detached from Czechoslovakia in 1993 through the non-violent Velvet Revolution, I remember that, becoming the Slovak, officially, officially becoming the Slovak Republic. Hungary experienced similar political vicissitudes throughout the 20th century and was incorporated into the Communist Eastern Bloc after World War II. Hungary aligned itself with the nations of Western Europe after the Soviet collapse of 1991. I remember all this. I remember all of this. The Danube River Corridor has been a nexus of activity and development throughout the histories of both Slovakia and Hungary. The waterway, the second largest in Europe at 1,771 miles, has also served to bring both nations together through the ages. Since the first human habitation of the region, the Danube has been a natural route of migration and transportation, as well as a fertile ribbon along with to settle and cultivate society. Both Bratislava and Budapest, the capital and largest city of Slovakia and Hungary, respectively, lie on the banks of the Danube. This keeps going. <laughs> this route traverses Slovakia and Hungary along the Danube, stitching together cities, towns, and endless vistas of both countries. It ends with an exploration of southwestern Hungary. The aviators will bask in the myriad views for which both nations are renowned, and they will gain an appreciation for the rich history and centuries of development of the two nations along the course of the route. 291 nautical miles, two and a half hours, which means it'll be like seven hours for me. Um, looks like we're going to do probably two legs per video. So there'll be three videos for this bush trip. Alrighty, let's see if I can remember my format for flying a bush trip. <laughs> it's been several months. Let's get going. Alright, it looks like we start out in the dark. Or sunrise. Hopefully it's sunrise. Let's um have a peek around here where we are starting. We like to do that when we do these bush trips. If you've never been with me for a bush trip before, welcome. Those of you who have returned for another bush trip, thank you very much. Um, we do different formats depending on the bush trip and how I feel. We always start out by looking around the airport, just get an idea for the train, how beautiful it is. We do have a higher expectation for better scenery since the bush trips do line up with a, or coincide with a world update where you'd think they'd have better scenery, right? So we are a little pickier in our commentary. Um, the airplanes always start running at the end of the runway, and let's see if I can find some lights. There we go. Um, as far as navigation, it just depends. Sometimes we do completely manual navigation. Sometimes we have the VFR map we'll use. Sometimes we have GPS, and we have autopilot. In this case, we do have GPS and autopilot, so we'll probably use it since we have it. We have nothing to prove to anybody, right? We have navigated 
in the most difficult ways and the easiest ways and everything in between. Just depends how we feel. So let's see here. Let's make sure we got flaps down at least one. We do. We do repair and refill, which is Control R on my keyboard, or is it Alt R? I can't remember. <laughs> it's been too long. Uh, and we just enjoy the journey. And what we do sometimes is I'll read everything, and then we'll just fly it with sightseeing. Or other times I will read about something, we'll fly to it, read about something, we'll fly to it. Just depends. So you never miss anything in sightseeing, although I do condense it so you're not watching three or four hours of video, right? You just watch, in this case, it would be three consumable videos. So we'll cut it down to fit into that. But um, you don't miss anything. Alrighty. Oh, also, a lot of you appreciate these boat trips because you're either following along and you're having struggles yourself or you just enjoy watching them because you don't have the simulator yourself. Just depends. Alrighty, here we go. After taking to the Slovakian sky from Malachi Air Base, set a course to the northwest. Fly over the low hills of the Little Car Carpathians, a mountain range situated to the southeast of the air base. Sight the road and converge with it to the city. The city lies on the banks of the Molina River, a tributary of the Morava, Morava, Morava River, which is a tributary to the Danube. Regional hub of commerce, Malachi has rich history and boasts a number of historic buildings. That's only two minutes away, right? So we're gonna read on in the next one. Let's see if they fix this. They fix the timer that if you start the timer and close the log and come back, the timer keeps going. But nope, things still expand. Dang it. They don't see this as a bug. Although in the beginning of the sim, this used to stay collapsed. And you could see where, you could keep track of where you were going. So right after that, we're going to adjust course, or follow the GPS in this case. And to the south to get to a new heading. <laughs> For visual reference, fly a course equidistant from the village of Galagy to the north and Jakubov to the south. Sight to fly to the river named after the Moravia, the historic Czech region. The river defines the border of Slovakia and the Austrian, oh, and Austria, in this part of Europe. Okay, so we're going to look for some rivers and cities, basically. That's the too long to read version, and then we'll read about more of this as we go. So we can put that away. If you pull up the VFR map, sometimes the POIs are listed here. Um, just depends. In this case, they're not listed. Or maybe they are. Is this it here? Let's see. Um, no, this is one and two, so... Um, those are just waypoints. Sometimes the POIs are actually listed. Oh, interesting. But anyway, we're heading towards the cities to look for the river. That's what that is showing us. So let's set up autopilot because we're going to use it. Um, altitude. Where's altitude on this thing? Is it here? There it is. Uh, what are we at now? We're at 600 or so feet. 710 feet above sea level. Why is my mouse blinking so weird? So let's go 2,000. And we'll um, go higher if we need to. I like to stay as low as possible unless I have to climb. If you zoom this out, I mean, yeah, there's some mountains. We're going to come out here to some mountains. Let's go to 2,500 then maybe. Um, just to be safe. And we're going to do, we are going to do, where's flight director? There's flight director. We're going to use nav for GPS. We're going to use vertical speed to climb. You could use IS hold. I like these vertical speed. Where's my click spot for this thing? There it is. Um, can I just dial it back? Hello? Why won't this go up? See this zero? That needs to go up. Um, really? Is this not working? What's wrong with this thing? That's really strange. It cannot be zero. Fine, let's do IS hold. Um, we'll just click it as we're climbing. That's weird. I don't understand what's wrong with this thing. It doesn't click and it doesn't spin. Huh. Now it says 100. Now it's working. Kind of. 5, 6. I want to get to like 1500 feet per minute. And 15. There you go. 15. That's weird as all get out. I don't know. But anyway, we've wasted enough time. I just want to give a, a summary of how this works and everything since um, it's been a couple months we've done a bus trip. So here we go. We don't need to rev before we go because it's um, a very long runway. Ooh, very touchy rudders. Oh my, what's your deal here? Please cooperate with me. Okay. Uh, what? That was very strange. Okay, brakes to stop the wheels, flaps coming in. We normally don't need to worry about wind. 
um, in these bush trips, but this is incredibly windy. Huh, I don't see a wind option on there. And why is my yoke not working at all? Okay. Let me reset some things here. Okay, that's better. Uh, still not working right. It's going side by side. It's not really... Now it's working. Okay. That was weird. That happens a lot in these push trips, little bugs. Man, this wind is ridiculous. Holy cow. All right, we're going to hand fly out of here. Jeez. <laughs> hand fly towards the cities. And then we'll look for some rivers. Um, geez, I wonder if the wind is going to be a factor. That'd be nice. Have to work a little bit. The push trips have been getting kind of easy lately. So it'd be nice if you have a challenge. It's just a bummer if you crash because then you have to redo part of it. But anyway. All right, we're going to fly here towards the pink line. And then once we line up with the pink line, we'll turn back and engage autopilot. And then we'll look around. Um, what are we at? I want to go 2,500 feet. We're going to get to 2,500 feet before we engage autopilot, probably. Oh, pink line's moving. Let's do autopilot now. There we go. Oh, it's going to turn us right to go left. To get closer to the line. That's fine. Whatever it wants to do. And we're coming up at 2,500 feet. Nope. We lost our vertical speed. I mean, it says we're in 1,000, but we're now worth in 1,700. I mean, yeah, 299 or 0, so there's weather in play here, which is cool. Because like I said, normally weather is not a factor. Um, we will have to watch our speed, because if we overspeed, we will blow up the aircraft. and have to start over. Um, everything is good. Full fuel. Don't I have a view out this window? I guess I don't. Whatever. Alrighty, um, I'm going to keep an eye on my speed here. And everything looks good. In a minute and a half, we're going to turn. So let's bring back the throttles a little bit so we don't overspeed. Being in the yellow is okay. But you do not want to hit those candy stripes. All right, let's look outside. Whoa, that's loud. Get a good view of everything here. Uh, maybe start taking some screenshots in case I forget to take screenshots later. Um, I do love this weather. Let's go from the side. Let's go from the side. All righty, cool. So... There's the city we're looking for, and then we're going to make a turn, and then we'll read about the next two things. So uh, we're going to do this, we're going to make a turn, and then we'll read about the next thing. So I'll see you in a couple minutes my time. Yeah, like four minutes my time, maybe 20 seconds, 40 seconds your time when I cut down sightseeing. And um, enjoy, see you in a moment. about to reach the river so let's zoom in here so you can actually see that we're going to reach the river well let's try that there we go so once we reach that river we're going to make another turn so let's read about it while we're preparing you can see the river down there um that's done that's done turn on to a south southwest heading it's gonna be a big turn here in a minute we follow the river to zahar zaharksa i don't know zaharksa Ves, the western more settlement in slovakia a sharp bend in the river um, of, the, of the, on the sharp bend in the, the Murvava on the western periphery of the village is the more Point land in the country. Okay, so there's going to be a sharp bend. Whoops. We're going to turn this way, and then in a minute and a half, there's a sharp bend, which is the corner of the country. Okie dokie, get ready to make the turn. There's our river there. We should be turning any second. And then, since that's so quick, um, from there, follow the course of the river to the southeast. The course of the waterway is flanked on both sides by wetlands, 
forests and oxbow lakes. You can see the forests and wetlands are ready, and then the lakes are these little things. We talked about that in a different bush trip. Are we going to turn? There we go. <laughs> Making me nervous. Um, let's see. Sight the lake. Stolarogvisco. Nazilarkats. And keep just to its west and fly over the Davinsky Jezero, a lake on the wetlands. That is one of the best preserved in all of Europe. The area is renowned for its biodiversity and summertime bloom of the white water lilies. I just realized something. They are showing reference images now for each point of interest or waypoint. They've never done that before. That is really cool and I like it. I just wish they would keep these stupid things collapsed. Because remember, for the first year and a half of bush trips, there's that wind again. Well, that's cool. For the first year and a half of bush trips, when you would collapse them and come back to the log, they'd stay collapsed. And they don't anymore. Huge frustrating bummer. Isn't that beautiful though? Look at that. Let's come over here. Oh, there we go. There's your forest and wetlands. And agriculture. A rectangular town. More towns in the distance. Beautiful. So we got two things going on. We're going to a bend in the river, which is the corner of the country. And then we're going to... Um, there's the bend there. And then we're going to this Oxbow Lake. Or some kind of lake. And then once you get there, we'll read about the rest of the trip. So look for the corner of the country. And then look for the lake. Of course, whenever I do things like this, there we go. There's the corner of the country. <laughs> right there. Whenever I do the sightseeing components, I always keep the waypoint or point of interest in the sightseeing so you never miss it. Um, and there's our lake there. So, actually, I'm not going to give you sightseeing. We're just going to cut it down through editing here. But there's a lake we're looking for, so let's look outside briefly. Whoa, together for a moment here. Got the wetlands, the marshes, the forests, and the oxbow lakes. And then the mountains coming up. I wonder if we need to climb a little bit. We probably do. I think I'll have us climb a little bit. Um, and there's the corner of the country right there. Beautiful. Alrighty, let's climb, and then we'll get to our little river, lake thing, whatever they call it. Uh, let's go up to 3,500 feet, I guess, and let's just do, um, how do we want it? If I do IS hold, we're not going to climb, unless, I, how, cause how do I control IS from here? You don't, you just have to slow down and then hit IS. So what I can do is tip us up with the yoke, that'll slow us down, right? And then do IS hold, bam, didn't work. It's not going to work. Why won't I? There we go. There. So now if I keep full throttle, it'll make us climb that steeply, right? There we go. 950 feet per minute, 1,000 feet per minute. That works. That was really clumsy. I don't know why it's so clumsy. Something going on with the mouse or something. Anyway, check this out while we climb, because we'll level off in a second, and our lake is just blow the nose, and then we'll read about the next greatest thing. And there's 3,500 feet, and where's our lake? There it is. Is that it? Where'd it go? Hey, where are you? Um, are you? Are we over you? There it is. Okay, we are over it. See, that's saying the GPS puts you directly over waypoints, and you cannot see them. But it looks like we're going to clear the mountains, thankfully. So let's pull up the nav log. Oh, this is right into my desk. Um, after this lake, we're going to Devon Castle. Continue flying the course of the river to the south-southeast, traversing wetlands, fields, and vistas of Slovakia and eastern Austria, which means Austria would be that way, right? If we're heading south. I mean, sorry, <laughs> eastern is this way, because... No, 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 no. Eastern Slovakia. Jeez, eastern Austria is here, because we're heading south, west, east. We're going south. Of course. Alrighty. Sight the confluence of the rivers in the distance. The juncture of the two rivers. Um, I see. Oh, here they are, right here. Cool. There's the Danube and there's the Morava. That's awesome. The conjunctures of the river. A prominent forest's peak. Highest mountain. 1,600 feet. Oh, we're like double. <laughs> we don't need to be this high. If it's only 1,686. Anyway, sight the castle, which lies on the eastern shore of the confluence. So, 
Oh my gosh, these presets are different. So, here is the confluence. Eastern is this side, the eastern shore. So right there's our castle. You can see a rendering ink and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Should I go on my rant about POI sticking out like a sore thumb? No, not today. The castle is one of the oldest. It was built in part to watch over the important commercial traffic of the rivers. Okay, I just smashed my microphone, sorry. And then once you get to the castle, we'll read about the rest of this and try to find our airport. There's an airport there, huh? Okay. Um, it says we're too high then. We don't need to be this high if it's only 1686 feet. That's interesting down there. That's some kind of royalty thing. Um, but I wanted it behind enough because sometimes the train elevation in the sim doesn't match real life. It happens. Okay, since we're literally going over the castle, we're going to have to come from the outside. Um, and then we'll hop back in. Kind of kills the, the um, immersion a little bit, but you know what? So be it. Look how beautiful that is. Is this a flight simulator or a sightseeing simulator? It's both. It's both. There's your castle, supposedly. Um, let's see if I can actually see it. This is the eastern shore. So this is the eastern shore on this side. Um, Dude, see a castle there. Um, I spotted this earlier. Yep, it's it's the yeah, it's in here. Oh, just gonna pause so we can see it. Don't crash. Thank you. There it is. Yep. See, there's the castle and the grounds and the wall. It's just we're so high, it's hard to see. So that brings me to another topic. Actually, let's read about where we're going, and then I'll talk about the other topic quickly that we haven't talked about in a long time. The castle right there. Okay. Follow the course of the Danube. Stay north of its northern bank. That would be where we are now. Pass over the low peaks of the mountains, which is here. And then... Bratislava, which is here, obviously, the capital of Slovakia, will come into view. Uh huh. Actually, it's this whole area, I assume. Whoops, don't overspeed. Don't overspeed. You will crash. That wasn't overspeed. What was that for? Anyway, adjusting my speed a little bit. Anyway, it's this entire area, left and right, look, or left. Because that's the other country. Um, anywho. Modern day has been honed through centuries of influence by cultures throughout Europe, and today Slovakia Center is finance, arts, and kitchen commerce, the wide range of diversity forged Bratislava, reflected in its varied architecture. 20th century designs, 21st century creations, so on, so on. You can pause and read if you want to. Um, ooh, it's only 35 miles downstream from Vienna. It's the only national capital in the world to border two neighboring countries. Interesting. Views from above the city, beauty, historical evo evocativeness. Ah, this mouse is being weird. All right. Um, after the city, come on, mouse. After the city, we turn to the northeast and join the views in the site, the airport. Really? What are we looking for? Victor Bravo. Oh, it's way over here. Okay, there's Victor Bravo. So we're kind of going backwards a little bit. Okay, cool. It lies um, north of a lake. Yep. And a large railroad yard. Okay. Land at the airport to complete this portion of the journey. Okay, sorry that was so clumsy, but with my mouse and weird crap going on, I had a very difficult time. Okay, let's enjoy the city. Oh, look at the thing sticking out. So the other topic I was going to bring up super quickly is altitude. So one thing you can do is fly at an altitude where you're safe of terrain. Let's get into a comfortable landing position here. You fly at an altitude that keeps you safe of the train. And why are we going to the left of the airport? Um, wow, this mouse only works like every third click. There we go. Now let's turn off autopilot too. Um, oh yeah, that's right. It does this weird thing with the trim. Oh, come on. Okay. One option is to stay very high so you can be clear of any terrain, etc., etc., but then you lose out, miss out on things like, that's not an airport there. No. Then you miss cover between Victor Bravo, correct? Victor Bravo. You can stay high, clear of terrain, all that good stuff, but then you miss out on things like that castle. The other option is to stay very close to the ground 
and then you can see things but then you're always climbing and descending constantly to watch out for the train which is exhausting <laughs> and adds a lot of time we've done it both ways and we're going way too fast considering there's an airport right in front of us supposedly what does this airport look like this airport looks like my gosh this mouse come on mousy it's this big field next to some railroad yards i don't understand where we land exactly hopefully it'll make sense once we get there um anyway so for this trip we stayed above the train so we missed the castle other legs other trips we might be lower oh yeah it says it's right below us according to the reference image so let's zoom around a little bit here and land on it um but you get the idea, right? Now we've done it both ways. We've flown in mountains where we go very low to the valley so that we can see things. We've also flown in the mountains where we stay above the peaks, but then we miss things. And where there's plains, like was it the... What was that peninsula that we flew? We stayed really low to the ground all the time because it was completely flat for like 12 hours worth of bush trips, 18 hours worth of bush trips. <laughs> So we've done that too. We've done it always. Just like we've navigated always, we've flown it all ways. Now we're pulling the train, checking out the capital city. There's a railroad yard. There's some towers. Check out our vitals here. First set of flaps. Whoops, now it's too early for flaps because we sped up, but that's okay. All right, let's turn around. Now let's have a land here so we can go into the next leg. Um, I don't think there are any options in this to get wind turned on. I don't see it. I'll check out a minute. That is not an airport. Um, if I can turn on wind, then it'll tell me and I'll be able to see. Cause there's no ATC, so I can't look at for an ATIS or anything. See, so ATC isn't even an option. Okay, so according to the reference image, this is our airport. According to the GPS, it doesn't look like it. Um, this does not look like a runway here. Well, it must be though, because it is coming up on the GPS quickly now. So let's just land here in this field, full flap really fast this is not a good approach this is terrible and the wind is not cool don't just get on those brakes and hopefully not bounce too much oh boy Cr crab it okay we're, we were down oh boy let's not hit a tree we'll have to redo everything and that's a crash ah let's do for the last waypoint this should be not too far back and let's see what happens um if we're supposed to land there we might want to try a different angle because that wind was ridiculous i was able to crab it. okay here we go here we go let's um okay so where we headed the waypoint was here so our airport is up here right there supposedly okay I don't know. I mean, that does not look. Land at the airport. Okay, we'll land in that field and taxi around until it accepts us. That's so strange, though. I don't know. Let me get us back up there, and then I'll rejoin you. All right, we're going to try landing in a different direction here to see if the wind is better so once it smooths out we know we're landing in a good direction see how it's starting to smooth out so I'm thinking if we land like this whoops without hitting those trees it'll be a little bit smoother I feel like not as much space to land but we're gonna try it here oh boy no the wind's terrible every way we go Oh, now there's crosswind again, so let's just be gentle on our touchdown here and try to stop before we hit the trees. Are we going to be able to stop before we hit those trees? Okay, we're bouncing. And now there's trees. Oh my gosh, what? 
Where are we supposed to land? That is way too bumpy to land. I'm really confused, to be honest. Okay, just did some research, and this airport, in real life, closed in 2007. So that would explain why the current satellite data doesn't have it. Because why would the satellite data have it <laughs> if it's been gone for like 17 years or something, 14 years, 16 years, whatever the math is. 16 years, maybe that would be better, okay. So I'm tempted to land there, but that is clearly the wrong airport because that is Indigo Bravo and it says to land at Victor Bravo. So well, that's what we're supposed to do. And we look at the reference image. And the reference image clearly is this disaster of a field. So I guess we're going to keep trying to land there until we make it. I mean, this is ridiculous. But that wind is so strong that I wanted to land from that other angle. But then there's not enough room to get over those trees and slow down. Because the ground is so rough that you just bounce all over the place. So those of you who have completed this before I have, good for you, not in a negative way, good for you, but good for you in a positive way. And um, more power to you. <laughs> I don't know how, but we're gonna try this angle again because see how the trees are cut out here as though there were a runway or there was a runway, see, at one point. So that's what we're gonna aim for. Look, crosswind though, look at this crosswind. I mean, that's absolutely crazy town. It'll be a little bit better when we turn in, but it's still crazy town. So right wing down, left rudder, I guess. No, wait, other way, from the from the left. Left wing down, right rudder, which is what I did the first time, but then it bounced and crashed because this is so rough. It's super confusing, but there's the cutout where the runway would have been. So we're going to keep trying. Full flap, even though that might make it a little more difficult, to be honest, but then we can go slower and be nice to touch down at hovering speed because the wind is so strong I wish we could like hover over it which we've done sometimes flying Cessnas in storms where you literally have a ground speed of half a knot but your wind speed is like 75 knots okay so I don't know how we're supposed to do this I mean, look how insane this wind is so I mean it's nice this is fun I'm glad it's not easy because like we've said before, some of these boat trips are getting pretty darn easy. Um, so let's just see what happens here. I got four right rudder just to not... Okay. Look, I see the wind is so strong and there's ridges there. Um, this is not cool. This is not cool. Let's see if we can... Um, it'd be nice if my yoke were working. Let's see, is that going to count? I don't see a save icon. Hello? Yeah, see, there's... Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. I'll take it, I guess. Let's move on to leg two. Your aircraft has been refueled. I think they started that recently. Um, so you don't have to do... Because um, you used to have to map repair and refuel. And nobody would, so everybody would be confused all the time. But now they just refueled it themselves. Let's turn on landing lights. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so leg two. Where are we headed for leg two? We're headed to Hotel Bravo Yankee. So let's set up autopilot. First of all, let's see where we're going. Are we going into the mountains? Actually, we can use this to see if we're going into the mountains. Um, I thought that was us. Well, that's just a different airplane. Okay. Um, and, okay, it's scrolling the other thing, too. No, no mountains. At all. So that means that we can stay nice and low to the ground, like I just said in the previous leg. So let's do autopilot really low. Let's do... What are we at now? 400 feet only. Let's do... Let's do a really low 1500. I don't know if we don't go that low, but let's do it. We'll use flight director and nav and vertical speed if it'll let me this time. Come on, every tenth click actually registers. 1200 feet as we can. 
and simple 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 all right now all we need to do is read about what we're doing so we're going to take off and head 167 degrees for five minutes or so lift off and set a course to the south and pass over the airport fly to the east of a large oil refinery and start the site the danube again where it goes to a dam part of a complex hydroelectricity you can pause and read if you want to my voice will go blank if i keep reading all of this treaty 1977 which i don't remember because i'm not quite that old I'm very close though so we're looking for a dam see this big river or the river comes into a dam big body of water that's what we're looking for that's five minutes away and then 10 minutes after that or 10 minutes yeah 10 minutes after that we're going to continue following fly the slovakia hungary border which is really cool which is defined by the river this region is called little hungarian plain Characterized by wetlands, pilots can gain a great appreciation for the portents of the Danube. Um, Long River, you can pause and read again. Alluv alluvium, okay. Agriculture development, okay. Archaeologists have uncovered a human sediment. Okay. Um, continue flying until you get to um, this main road, the bridge. Okay, so we're looking for this big body of water. They're looking for that bridge. Then after that, we'll read about the last two parts. That way saves us time. So, I could not find wind in this. Sometimes you go to menu, you can turn on wind, but I just don't see that option. Um, oh, this is actually telling me my trim. Is it accurate? Or is that something else? Sometimes if you click on things, you can do this too. Wind vector. Ooh. Speed direction. Headwind. Oh, I found a wind. Yes. Nice. So we had 11 knot tailwind. That's why it was such a problem. Okay. Can I turn this off? Yes, we can. Nice. Okay, cool. So let's um, head out. Turn around so we can fly into the wind. We don't need much. So we're going to go this way and turn around. Um, so we can fly directly into the wind. Whew. That's crazy. And then we'll head off on our way. Look for a big lake caused by a dam. And then a bridge along the border of Slovakia and Hungary. That's the summary of the Navlog. <laughs> and then we'll simply keep going here. I like that that wasn't easy to land that thing. That was nice. Oh, jeez. Let's not tip over. All right. How are we with the wind? And whoops. We were perfect. Now we're perpendicular. Watch where you're going here. Do we have enough? Do we have enough room for this? Let's spool this thing up. Full flap for this. And let's go. You should be able to take off within seconds here with this crazy headwind. Come on. Maybe not. Oh boy. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Oh boy. Here we go. Upsy daisy. Can we do a full flap? Oh boy. Oh no! Bring in one flap. Oh no! Oh, we hit the train account. Did it crash us? Get some speed. Oh boy. Okay, this is not how you do this. Um, wait a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. That happened before. I had to reset my controls when I hit continue. There we go. Brake stop, wheels full flap in, or all flap in. That's happened before where I had to reset all my quadrant controls in order for it to actually work. So that would have worked had I reset my props beforehand. For the record, that would have worked. Okay. So here we go. We can engage autopilot already because we're pretty well lined up with what we want to do. There we go. Let's reset everything. There we go. Okay, cool. Even better. And autopilot is confused. Let's turn that off. And we'll take over ourselves. <laughs> Nav is indicated, flight director is indicated, vertical speed was. But we're already at our altitude, so that might have confused it too. And do I have control of my yoke? Please, can, we, can you hear my yoke moving and nothing's happening? Yeah. It's not working again. Come on. Please. Okay, go side to side. It doesn't want to go forward. 
Okie dokie, so I will use trim and throttle to do that. We are well above our desired altitude because of technical difficulties. But we'll figure this out here. Okay, let's not run into the yellow. Um, what if I do this? What if I hit Alt here and then hit Autopilot? Will that make it happy? Yes, no, what are you doing? What's happening to Autopilot? It's not following GPS now, it wants to go all the way. Oh, maybe it is, it just wants to get right lined up with it. Let's hit Alt again. Are you gonna come back? Slowly? We're lined up with the pink line. Are you gonna turn back? Yes? No? Yes? No. Maybe. It doesn't want to. It knows it's supposed to go here. So that it can stay on there with the wind, but... Oh no. Yep, there it is. Okay, now it's compensating for the wind. Look at that 41 knot crosswind. That's why. Because you gotta stay over here to line up over there, right? Tracking versus heading. We've talked about that before. We've never needed to talk about that in boost trips. You're tracking this, but your heading is this because of the wind. If we aimed at that, we'd be way over here. So we have to aim over here to line up over here because of the wind. See? It's been a long time since we need to talk about that. Alrighty, we're headed for this big body of water and we're going to look for a bridge. So that is quite a ways away now and Autopilot is really confused with the altitude because... <laughs> of technical difficulties. Just stay where you are. Oh, it will come back down. Okay, let's just go like this. Will it work if I go like this? What if I do IS hold, bring back throttle, right? That should have us come down pretty quickly to 1500. Will that work? There we go, 1500 feet. We're right over the oil refineries. And now we're nice and low, so we can see everything even better. And I love this weather because, as I've said several times, usually weather is not a factor in bush trips, except for the Patagonia one, but it's clearly a factor in this one, which makes the difficulty much, much higher. Um, so far, I would so far I would put this in the advanced category for bush trips. Now, the advanced isn't saying much. I'm just saying compared to the other bush trips. If you take all 42 or whatever, this is one of the more difficult. However, you don't have to navigate yourself because you have GPS. So maybe it's not advanced. Maybe it's early advanced or late intermediate in terms of all the bush trips. Anyway, there's a big body of water. I'm going to let this thing fly us to the bridge in about 10 minutes or so. I want to keep track of our speed so we don't overspeed. And I will see you at that bridge and we'll read about the rest of this lake. there's our bridge right there in the distance that's what we're looking for so while we're getting there let's check out the weather the storms this is such an amazing bush trip with the weather we've never had this before in 40 some bush trips we've never had weather like this this is so freaking cool it's amazing i'm just so thrilled to be flying this with you all Alrighty, here we go um, that road or that bridge is right there. So what is next? Um, turn to a south heading at the bridge and fly over, fly into northwest Hungary. Pass over the city of Gur. 
which lies on the Matsum arm of the Danube River at the confluence of the Raba and the Rabka tributaries. It's an important city that lies along critical route between Budapest and Vienna. Rich history dating back to the Neolithic age and your cultures and developments. You can read about the rest of this if you want to by pausing it. Turkish Wars, sixth largest city in the nation. All right, so we're going to go to there. This is the city. And then after that, we're looking for the airport already. And I'm looking for Bravo Yankee, which is right here. So basically, we're flying straight to the airport. That's another three minutes, also six minutes total. Turn into the course over Gayor and gain a visual on the motorway in the distance and then land at the airport, which is a small grass strip. Okay. Um, depending on wind, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. 33 knots. Won't be that much on the ground, but still. So let's get into our comfortable landing position. And let's see what's going on. Why is autopilot doing this? Oh, wants us to fire to the city and then we'll turn and we will adjust to fly into the wind this time. And hopefully we can get this on the first try. Had I had the wind pulled up in that first leg, obviously we wouldn't have crashed twice. But because we were landing with an 11 knot crosswind tailwind, that's pretty pathetic. <laughs> so anyway, the city is here. This is what we're looking for. And the airport is just to the left of it. So we will slow down. Actually, let's start slowing down right now. Um, and then we will land at that airport. Okie dokie. In fact, let's take off autopilot. No, let's look outside quickly together. And then we will turn off autopilot and land. So there's your city up there. Then we turn left for the airport, which is over there somewhere. Maybe it's right here. I don't know, but there's the motorway. So it's going to have us turn in a second. So we better get going here or else autopilot's going to do something we don't want to do. So let's hop back inside, turn off autopilot and the director and move all of our controls around so we can regain control of the aircraft because it's super strange for some reason. But let's fly out a little bit more bring back throttles so we don't overspeed, come down a little bit, and um, turn left towards the airport any second now. I think it's over there. I think, yeah, I think that's it right here. I'm guessing. Do I really know? No. I have no idea. Can now set us over here more. Hmm. Is it really going to be in the clouds in the rain? It could be... I don't know, but right now we have a tailwind, so we're going to want to come around the other side. Um. Huh. Of course, I'm relying heavily on GPS. This might be it right here. And of course, if we didn't have GPS, I'm perfectly capable flying manually in terms of navigation. We've done it a dozen times or more. It's not difficult. I do enjoy it, but... When we have GPS, we're going to take advantage, because we can. Why not? Just using the tools that we have available to us. Let's not get too low to the ground right now, because we will um, not be able to see where we're going. Is this our airfield right here, maybe? No. So that should be over here on the left. Because of the tailwind, we're definitely going to fly over it. And then we'll come back and land the other direction. Once we spot this in the rain... I don't even know if this would be suitable VFR flying in real life. Perhaps. Questionable, at least. At best. <laughs> oh boy. Where's this airport? And, um... This tailwind is quite humorous. So we're looking for this thing. GPS says we're going to go over it, so let's fly to the left a little bit so that we can actually see it when we go by. Then we can hit heading bug once we figure out what the runway orientation is. And then we'll use that to return. And we'll land somewhere. Under a rainbow, perhaps. Oh, is this it right here? That must be it right there. If that's it, that's wonderful, because that means the runway orientation will be perfect for the wind. No, that's not it, because this has a road that goes around it. Is this it here? Maybe that's it there, because there's a building. That could be it there. Again, perfect, though, for wind. Because we'll be able to fly directly into the wind. What's OAT? 11 degrees Celsius. We're well above freezing. Don't need to worry about icing. 
Yeah, that's definitely the airport. Okay, so let's keep our speed here a moment. We'll line up with the runway, and then we'll hit heading bugs so we know the orientation of the runway. And then we'll come back, and we will land into the wind, thankfully. Alrighty, here we go. Let's do a long downwind over the runway, which you normally wouldn't do, of course. You normally fly with the runway next to you, but we're going to do it this way, because that's how we're going to do it. So there's a the runway orientation. So let's hit heading bug. Please, heading bug. This isn't going to let me do it that way. Can I even move my heading? I can't even move my heading bug. What? What? Hang, you're supposed to be able to hit heading. Heading, heading. It's not even working. Now it's working. Again, it's the whole thing where the mouse only responds every third input. Well, we might not be running the orientation anymore. Yeah, we could be close enough. So there we go. So now when we know, we'll turn around. And that's our head. That's the direction of the runway. Hmm. Maybe it's a little off because it should be with the wind. All right, let's slow down. And hopefully that's enough room to turn around. And slow down and land. Um, definitely enough time to slow down, but... Will we be able to see it in time to land? For set of flaps, let's not descend because we don't want to lose sight of the runway. And when we turn it around, we should see it a little bit off. Whoops, there's okay, we're past runway orientation. Okay, yeah, we are a little bit off. And yeah, not too bad, but could have been better. Anyway, keep our speed down because we do have flaps out and we do want to descend. It looks like the trees are carved out and we should be able to get this in the first try with the wind the way it is should be pretty easy to stop with a 20 knot crosswind just to take us like 10 feet to stop definitely STO all conditions bring that throttle back why does this in oh gosh now I lost my yoke control come on come on do it okay now it's back the sim stalled you saw that I assume and then I lost the yoke control So a lot of weird buggy stuff going on that never used to happen. Okay, a little bit of crosswind yet from the left. So left wing down right main or right rudder. Left mouse in the grass though, but you just don't want to land too slowly or too smoothly because you can slide and roll over in real life anyway. Okay, more than a little crosswind. <laughs> There's a lot of crosswind. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, let's get that speed down without sinking, because it wants to sink. Look at that look at that, see? Stall horn? What? You should be way above stall. Full flap. A little bit of flare. Ready? Should we crab it out? Left wing down, right rudder, left main. Somewhat of a firm touchdown. You don't want to grease these things. Here we go. Nice and easy. Ground effects take over. There we go. Nice. And firm. Perfect. Nose wheel down. Get on those brakes. Flaps coming in. Just like that, look at that, 20 feet, 15 feet to stop. Where's my save icon? There it is. Okie dokie, that's it for the first video. Leg three and four will be in the next video, so subscribe so you know when they drop. Like so that people know we exist. And that's it, I'll see you next time.